Buddhists cannot resist weeping when they feel a great influence of this place. As soon as I put my forehead on this Buddha's diamond throne, a thought came to my mind. It was to dedicate myself to protect this holy place. I asked the Venerable Kosen whether he also agreed as soon as this noble thought came to my mind. He not only agreed with me, but his thoughts were the same. From that day for six weeks, Dharmapala wrote a great many letters to world Buddhists, informing them of the plight of Buddha Gaya and its decline due to the incumbent Hindu priest. In spite of the response he received to the letters, on May the 31st, 1891, he called for a gathering at Vidodia Pirivena, Malikakanda, in Colombo. The main objective was the call for all Buddhists to unite with the slogan, Save Buddha Gaya. This meeting resulted in the formation of the Mahabodhi Society of Buddha Gaya. On his second visit to Buddha Gaya, Dharmapala was accompanied by three monks, and they all stayed at the Burmese Hermitage. At this time, southern Sri Lanka had been under colonial rule for three centuries. Dharmapala's father, Don Carolis, was born in the southern coastal town of Mathura. He migrated to the capital, Colombo, and started a furniture business. He married Malika, the daughter of A.P. Dharmagunawadana a landing proprietor in Colombo. He then began the popular furniture shop of H. Don Carolis and Sons in 1860. The birth of the first child of Don Carolis and Malika was notified to the venerable Mahoti Vatta Gunananda Thera who was a resident monk at Deepa Dutarama, Cotahena. However, at that time, the birth of a child had to be registered by the rector of the local church and the name David was given to the baby. Colonial rule had spread far and wide in the country. The historic Panadura debate of 1873 changed the course of events in Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. 
I went on foot from school to listen to a lecture. The welcome speech and the lecture, given in English by Colonel Henry Steele Olcott, the American Buddhist revivalist, were given to me to translate into Sinhala by the Venerable Gunananda Terra. After the lecture, my family stayed on. When Colonel Olcott shook my hand, the wisdom I gained cannot be described in words. David Haver Vitarana, who studied at St. Benedict's, St. Thomas's, and Royal College, and Vidyodia Pirivena, enhanced his knowledge of Western and Oriental languages and arts. He left government service and became a full time worker with Colonel Olcott in order to join his lecture tours around the world. An incident which shook Buddhists was the killing of a person after an attack on a procession near the Cotahena church. This incident was brought to the notice of the British government by Colonel Olcott as a violation of the Candian Convention of 1815. The result was the declaration of Vesak Poya Day as a public holiday, the appointment of separate registrars for Buddhist marriages, the handing over of Buddhist temporalities to Buddhists, and the non-prohibition of Buddhist processions. This led to the creation of the Buddhist flag. Dharmapala was vested with not only the post of secretary of Colonel Olcott's Buddhist Theosophical Society, but also the posts of Sarasavi Sandarasa, and was the first manager of the Buddhist schools of the society. In 1893, he was invited to address the World Parliament of Religions in Chicago. While returning from a series of lectures in America, he met Mary Foster Robinson at Honolulu, which led to her support of Dharmapala's national, social and cultural activities. She helped Dharmapala to establish printing presses, hospitals, schools, temples and dargabas as well as to purchase buildings for the Mahabodhi Society all over the world.
The realization of the importance of national education led Colonel Olcott and Dharmapala to inaugurate the Buddhist educational revival throughout the island under the leadership of the Buddhist Theosophical Society. At the time, rural Buddhist children did not have a place to go to school. With the blessings of the government, the missionaries established schools throughout the country. In 1881, Colonel Olcott established a Sunday school in Colombo, and on November the 1st, 1886, with the cooperation of the Venerable Hikadue Sri Sumangala, an English school was established for Buddhist children, which later became known as Ananda College. In 1901, Dharmapala's Mahabodhi Society established over 100 schools around the country. We should learn to stand on our own two feet. We should not rely on foreigners. We should start our own industries, Dhammapala remarked. In order to initiate local industries, Dharmapala sent youths to Europe and Japan to be trained in the production of safety matches, furniture, ceramics, clay, and printing presses. Dharmapala visited the villages situated in the far south of Sri Lanka using canoes and boats. He reached villages in the hilly region of Hiniduma and the coastal towns of Veligama and Matra by Palanquin to obtain more funds for the movement to upgrade the living conditions of the poor. purchased plantations and built schools, hospitals and temples. He also built houses for his stay during his visits. In order to revive the nation, in 1906, Dharmapala, under the Mahabodhi Society, commenced the singular Baudia newspaper. We don't have a national newspaper. No newspaper to express the voice of the nation or to protect Buddhism. Singhalese awake. Free Buddha Gaya was the slogan. the journals Buddhist Mahabodhi and the British Buddhist and the Buddha Gaya pamphlets in English for locals and foreigners to spread his campaign to the world. The railway strike in Colombo in 1912 against the imperial government resulted in not only the crippling of the city, but the whole country. Dharmapala was the orator who spurred the strike.
The 1915 communal riots were a watershed in the colonial history of Sri Lanka. Many nationalists were taken into custody, and the singular Baudia newspaper was sealed and banned. Dharmapala was kept under house arrest in India. During which time he wrote letters condemning colonial rule. Constantly reading the Tripitaka, he compiled a book titled Satya Muni Dharma. He devoted his time to enshrine the Buddha relics discovered by Indian archaeologists constructing the Dharma Rajika Vihara in Calcutta. The funds were obtained from the trust of the American, Mary Foster Robinson. Uttering phrases such as Arak drinker, polecat, beef eater and slave. He opposed the opening of taverns by the British government all over the country. Victor House was the last place Dharmapala stayed in this country. From there he witnessed the erection of the Dagaba of the Vidyodhya Pirivena. There he read in a newspaper the British archaeologist in India had discovered the spot at which the Buddha had made his first sermon after enlightenment. Dharmapala decided to go immediately to Banaris. So he proceeded to India, and while building a temporary rest at Isipatthana in Banaris, he slept under the Nuga tree, which is still standing. Spending difficult days there, he built a Mullagandakuti Vihara at Isipatthana. Hundreds of thousands of Buddhists from around the world visit these holy Buddhist sites in India due to his efforts. By this time, under the leadership of Dharmapala, temples, bhikkhu residences and centers of Buddhism were built in Kusinara, Saranath, Madras, Lumbini, London, Tokyo, Berlin, in addition to Buddha Gaya. I received more help from other countries than from my own country. However, some people in Lanka, while not subscribing a half cent for the work I am doing in the Holy Land, are asking the details of expenses from me. I'd like to see my end in India, the Holy Land where Buddhas were born.
Jan Mapala made the last speech in his motherland before boarding the ship for India. On July 31, 1931, at the auspicious hour of 9.30 p.m., in the Mulla Gandakuti Vihara at Isipatana, he was ordained as Siri Devamita Dhammapala. Imang chivar madas pab jitva sukhang chare On January the 16th, 1933, when he was 69, he received higher ordination in the presence of bhikkhus from Sri Lanka. Anagaraka Dhammapala, who had spent a long, active, challenging and creative life, passed away a few months later, on April 29th, at the Mullagandakuti Vihara. I will be reborn at Banaris, and once again the Buddha Sasana will prosper to spread the message of the Sakyamuni, which leads to Nibbana and its peacefulness. To spread the Dhamma, I will be reborn here even twenty times, were his last words. At the time Siri Devamita Dhammapala expired, I was a prisoner under the police commissioner of Banaris and had to obtain permission from him to stay in Banaris until the cremation. The suggestion I made that the coffin should be carried not by laymen but by Buddhist monks was accepted. So, with the novices, I carried the coffin. By taking on this task, I paid my last respect to him. Thus wrote the Venerable Sri Saranankara Tera. of Dhammapalatera, part of his ashes were interred at the Mullagandakuti Vihara, and the rest was taken to Sri Lanka after veneration of the Buddhist Theosophical Society headquarters in Madras. Thereafter, the ashes were taken to Talemana by ship and by train to Colombo Fort. From Fort, they were taken to Vidyodia Pirivena, Malika Kanda amidst a large gathering. Dawala sutu avatara tutu sand 
වෙවුල වෙවුලා මිනිස් ගොන්නුව කුලල බිඳගෙන දුවන සමයක නිවට සිහලුන් උසිගෙන්නුව සිහල පපුවක තිබෙන එඩිතර ගතිය බටහිර තනට පින්නුව සිහල ජාතික වීරයා සිහි කරව් අප පෙරමුණට ගින්නුව 